All right, let's write some simple code and see how this works with the compilation step and the interpretation step. So let's say I have a var equals 10 and a var b equals 20. And I'm just printing something on the console. It's a sum of a and b. Now this code, let's say this is the code, right? And uh, this is something that gets executed on the browser. Now the browser runs through the compilation step and then the interpretation step. So let's look at what the compilation step does here. The compilation step is just worried about the variable declaration. Of course, it does a lot more, but at least in this context of scopes, the compilation step examines the variable declarations. So whenever you have a bunch of code that gets compiled, as far as the variable declaration aspect of it is concerned, it just looks at these var keywords. So you have two set, two lines which have a var. So it's going to look at the first line, which is var equals 10. Now the compilation step doesn't bother with the RHS. It's just looking at the var keyword. So it just looks at this portion of the code. Says so var a. Say, okay, I got it. Now I've registered a variable called a, and that is in the global scope because this is not inside a function. Now it comes to line three, and now here it sees just this part, var b. Okay, so the first compilation step just lo looks just at the var, so it doesn't care about the RHS again. Now it says, okay, I've got var b, so it registers another uh, global variable called b, and uh, again, it's global because it's not inside a function. Now it's gonna examine line five, does it see any war here? No, it does not. So it just ignores it. And that is the compilation step. The compilation step in this code has basically registered two variables, a and b, in the global scope. Okay, let's look at the second example now. Again, I have a var equals 10. And now I've created a function called my fn. And inside the function, I have a couple of variables. I have var b equals 20 and I have var c equals b. And now I just say I print something on the console, a plus b, right? And I call my function from outside. Now, if you look at this code, can you identify what are the variable declarations that are happening over here? How many variables are being declared? If you answered this question as three, uh, well, then you're actually missing out on one variable declaration. So there are three wars here, right? So there is a var a, which declares variable a, which is a var b and a var c. So there are three variables here. But what if I were to tell you that there is actually a fourth variable? Var is a way you explicitly create a variable of your own, but then there are a bunch of things which also end up creating variables. What I'm referring to here is the function declaration over here. You notice there is a function declared with the name my fn. Remember I told you how functions are actually objects in JavaScript. And the minute you create a function, you're actually creating a sort of a variable which contains that object. So this function declaration actually results in JavaScript creating this variable called myfn and binding it to this function object. So there is actually a fourth hidden variable declaration, which is myfn. All right, so now let's play the role of the compiler and see what it does with these variable declarations. So it's going to start from the top. Again, it's interested only in the left-hand side, variable declaration var a, so it registers a to the global scope, like before. Now it's going to come to line three, and here it sees a function declaration called myfn. So it is going to register a variable called myfn. It knows that it's a function, but for the purposes of the variable, it's just, just another variable, right? It's bound to the name myfn. Now it's going to come down to line 4 and it sees a var b. Again, it's looking just at the left hand side. Now var b exists inside of a function declaration. So when it registers b, it does not register it in the global scope. It actually registers it in the scope of my fn. Okay, since it sees this function here, it creates a scope. You know, it at least makes a note that it is of a particular scope. And then var b happens to be inside the function, so it gets registered inside the my fn scope. Similarly, it looks at var c, and this is also inside my fn. So it registers the variable c inside the my fn scope. And now here, console.log does not have any variable declaration, so it ignores it. Now my fn execution does not have a variable declaration, right? It's just using a variable that was already declared. So it skips this line as well. So the compiler, when it compiles this code, actually ends up creating four variables. a, my fn, b and c. Let's look at one more example now. Okay, in the last example we saw how you can create a variable by uh, using a function declaration, right? We were able to create a variable without using a var. Uh, now in this example I'm going to show you one more way in which you can create a variable without 
using a var. It is kind of hidden, but uh, hopefully you can notice it based on what we've seen so far. All right, I'm gonna start with a var, my name equals Kashik. Okay, so it's a simple program which assigns a string to a particular value. And now I have a function here called greet, which uh, let's say it takes in a name argument. Okay, and then it prints console.log hello name. And let's say I call this greet function with the my name variable. Now, if you were to play the role of a compiler, can you identify how many variables are created by this code? If you said the answer is two, well, you're actually missing one more. All right, so let's take a look at the two which are obvious. So you have a var, my name. So there is a variable called my name created. And in the last example, we saw that when you create a function, you're actually creating a variable. Right? So this is greet. It's a new variable called greet, which refers to this function. There's actually a third variable here, which is the name. Okay, Even though you're not using a var here, the fact of you creating a method argument means that there is a variable that gets created when that method gets executed. So when I call greet over here and pass in a, variable, pass in a value, then that value gets assigned to this variable, right? So there's a name variable created over here and it's assigned the value that's passed to it. And then you can use that variable over here. So even though you're not using a var here, you're actually creating another variable. So let's play the role of the compiler again. If the compiler were to run through this code, what would it do? We we'll first look at line one, var my name. Now this should be very obvious now. It creates a variable called my name on the global scope. Now it comes to line three. Now it looks at greet. Now it realizes that it's a function, but it creates a variable called greet anyway. And now it creates a scope for greet, where any variable inside this function is registered in that scope. And the first variable that it registers is name here, because name is an argument. So there is a variable registration for name in the scope of greet. Okay, so it registers it. And then uh, this line really doesn't have any new variables created, so it ignores it. And then it comes down to here, and even this line doesn't have any new variables created, so it ignores that too. Okay, so this is how the compiler basically registers these variables under different scopes, depending on how you're calling it.